over the last few years of sampling for making beats, I figured out a few tips to finding samples that have really helped me out. I primarily sample from vinyl because I think it's fun. I've got a few record stores nearby, and it's a nice break from staring at a computer screen. But this applies to sampling from YouTube videos or any other source. The first tip I've got is to try to find songs with very quiet or limited percussion, which you can kind of EQ out. There are obviously plenty of songs out there with no percussion, but when I started to also sample from songs with percussion, it really opened up a lot more material that I could use. I did this recently on a song I put up on YouTube where you can hear You can hear the drums still in the background, but when the beat comes in, it doesn't conflict with the drums that are already in the sample. To EQ out the drums, which I've already done on these samples, I usually take out a little bit of the highs just to take out um, some of the immediacy of the hi-hats. And if the kick drum is getting in the way of the beat, sometimes I'll take out a little bit of the lows, but I try not to do that too much because it reduces too much of the bass of the track. And I feel like the bass helps fill out the the ultimate beat as a whole. The next tip I've got is to chop up several short instrumental parts from a song at the end of each line in between the singing parts. And let me give you an example of that in a song I'm working on right now. So here's the here's the album that I'm sampling from. So here's the singing. I'm gonna start right about here. So even though it was kind of a short time frame, if you chop up enough of those, you can stitch them together into something that you can turn into a song. And I've done this many, many times. It's probably one of my most used forms of sampling. So after sampling that record, I slowed down some of those samples on the 202. And here's what some of those chops sound like. It almost sounds like a different song because I've slowed it down on here, but it's actually the chops from that record. Now, as far as actually finding records to sample or songs to sample, again, I've spent a lot of time just going to record stores and digging through like the dollar bin. A lot of times I'll try to find albums that are solely piano music or instrumental music, if possible. It's just easier to sample from. And I've also had a lot of really great success with oldies and you know greatest hits albums are fun because there's all different kinds of bands on there and artists on there so you get a nice variety and oldies again the the percussion tends to sit low enough in the mix to where you can kind of eq around it or just chop around it i i really enjoy sampling from jazz records i just feel like there's so much variation in the song that when you add the beat to it it just makes everything more interesting to listen to than just single drawn out chords, but people do great things with that too. So whatever floats your boat. Occasionally you find really interesting things like this album that I found called Solitudes, which was environmental sound experiences. And it is recordings, field recordings from different environments where you can hear the birds, the wildlife, the you know, running rivers, things like that, which is just really fun to layer in the background of some songs to give it some kind of uh, ambience. So there's always some cool finds, but it's a lot of just digging through hundreds and hundreds of records and trying to find something that looks cool or sounds good. So these are the tips. I hope they help you out. If you have any tips of your own, please you know, drop a comment. I'm always interested in learning what other people are doing. And I frequently find that other people have these great ideas that I can incorporate into my workflow. <laughs>
If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. And thanks for listening.